Hello and welcome back to the preview show from Rams TV. The new season is finally here and Derby County kick off their League One campaign at Pride Park Stadium against Wigan Athletic in just a couple of hours time. Your opening day build up starts right here as well. Let's kick off by hearing from the man in charge. Here's head coach Paul Warren. Well, Paul, thanks for speaking to us. The madness all starts again this weekend. Are you ready for it? Yeah, as ready as you, you can be. Uh, Pre-season seems to go in a heartbeat. Um, so, uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Lads are in good fettle. Uh, got to get through two days training without any uh, issues. But, uh, yeah, looking forward to it. How do you look back on pre-season then? Uh, pretty well, really. I think, uh, obviously, the, the, the downside is, you know, Sibs and Tom have been struggling with their calf. Uh, everyone else has got through it really well. There's been some... Uh, really, people really stepping up. The new lads are settled in really well. Um, I think the lads have got a good idea of what we expect, which is obviously good. But it's just words, isn't it, until three o'clock and then it all really starts. So we'll see what we've got. We'll have a better idea what we've got after a couple of weeks. But, yeah, really pleased. We still need some, um, uh, you know, a couple of new faces in as well, I think. I still think we need to bolster the midfield and up top, which looks like we're close on doing. So, um, yeah, we're getting there. What's the sort of biggest positive or the thing that you've been really encouraged about that you can take away from pre-season ahead of the opener this weekend? Uh, I mean, it'd be something that probably don't, won't turn anyone on bar me. So uh, I just think that the, the, just the, the collective all have the, the same ambition. I'm not saying you don't start every season with, uh, you know, a feeling of like this, this year we're going to do this, this and this. But it just feels... Um, real positive environment where all the lads you know obviously want success but I think they have a better understanding of what it looks like in League One I think a lot of the players uh, here last year hadn't played League One and you know it isn't just about football utopia doesn't get you promoted it takes all sorts of performances in all sorts of games and all sorts of moments and I think uh, their attention to the detail is um, is prevalent this year I think so that's what sort of please me the most that I feel like the whole room is you know have ready for a right go like I know we've got a horrendous start on paper but then it's in a positive start that if you can pick up points in your first I mean I say points I mean a lot of points but if you pick up points in your first six games I think we've got all the top teams uh, Bolton, Peterborough, Oxford obviously starting with Wigan, Blackpool in the cup so uh, we've got some real top top games so um, yeah so we have to be at our best to win any game I know that but I just feel like the the dressing room and uh, is a real positive place and they're like eager to go. And you face Wigan in 48 hours, so what do you make of them from, from what you've seen in pre-season? What sort of test will they pose? Because they're clearly going to be fired up to overturn this points deduction. Yeah, and let's not kid ourselves. I know um, they've had troubles as you know we did this time last year, but that didn't mean that we didn't go into the first game with massive expectations, as will they. Uh, the manager's been in you know, quite a while now, so he's had his... as not dissimilar to me, I suppose, had his imprint on the team pre-season. They, they play um, with a, a real attacking front four. And if when you see the front four, if it is the front four, we think that's probably the best front line in the league. So we've got to try and keep them quiet and we've got to ask questions of their uh, back line. So like, I, I think they're a really good team. They'll have the ball a lot. So um, they're not a team that are going to come and park the bus and they're not a team that play direct. They'll have the ball a lot and they'll frustrate us a lot. I know it's going to be difficult to get the ball back off them because the way they play. Um, however, we think that, you know, when we have the ball that we can ask them as many questions. So it's a be a, uh, I mean, it won't be a league decider. You know, if you win it, you haven't won the title. If you lose it, you're not relegated by Christmas. So it just be, um, it always takes a few games to get all the teams in the league in there. Uh, proper fettle but um, yeah looking forward to it I think it'll be a good ask it's a good game I think I think you know we'll, hopefully we'll have a few people turn up um, so I look forward to it you'll have a decent crowd there so what's your sort of final message to the supporters going into this season well if you could stop stalking me in Meadowall every time I go to Meadowall a Derby fan finds me it's amazing I spoke to a lad yesterday I had to correct him because he had uh, not correct him. I don't mean it like that. I just had a. He said, oh, "What do you think of the signings?" I'm not sure about that one. I mean, well, let me stop you there, young man. Let me tell you how great he is. 
Uh, I just think, um, from a fan's point of view, I just hope you really enjoy the season. Look, I say this to my players all the time, look, life's too short. Football seasons are over in a heartbeat, like last year went in a heartbeat. So enjoy it for what it is. And look, it's theatre, isn't it, at the end of the day. You turn up, you don't know what you're going to get. You don't know if it's going to be the best game, the worst game. You could leave for 15 minutes to go and we could score two and you're like, oh my God, I missed it. So just enjoy it for what it is. It's an emotional roller coaster where you know that everyone at this football club is doing everything we can to get promoted. And if you can stay with the team more so when things aren't going well, because you don't need to sing if the team are 4-0 up. It's enjoyable, but it's when the team are losing or not playing well that being at home and having the fan base behind you gives the lads a massive boost. So if you can enjoy it, we'll do everything we can for a successful season. And um, hopefully I'll do an interview like this in the sun in the end of April, May, where everything's groovy. Derby head coach Paul Warren there, and there will be more from the Rams camp later in the programme. As we all know, Derby have really been through it over the last couple of years. And unfortunately, they're not the only club that have been. Today's opponents, Wigan, have found themselves in a similar situation over the last few years. In truth, their fans are probably just happy to see opening day of this campaign. They'll start the season on minus eight points. But like Derby a year ago, they finally have hope today under a new owner. It's been a roller coaster for Wigan. They were relegated at the end of the 2019 20 season after being put into administration, but bounced back up at just the second attempt as League One title winners in 2022. Last season saw them relegated again with yet more point deductions, and the future of the club really looked in doubt before local businessman Mike Danson stepped in at the 11th hour. Barry Worthington from Wigan podcast Progress with Unity has been telling me just how close Wigan came to going out of business. We, we were due to fall on the Thursday and on the Wednesday, the deal was signed. And by Friday, it paid 7 million quid to debtors and wiped all our debt out. Uh, he said that he's not throwing money at it. The budget's 3 million quid a year. I mean, that's not going to get us to the Premier League, but we've got a club uh, and we have to be run um, sustainably as possible. Uh, Sean Maloney was heavily involved in, in persuading him to come. He put together a plan how we see the club going over the next five years, how we can bring people through. Uh, from the, We've got a great academy, an absolutely superb academy. Um, you, you'll see on, on Saturday some of the academy lads who are in the team now, and they've only been in this season, uh, super players. Uh, and he put this this um, plan together for, for this for Mike Danson to look at, and he agreed to everything. Uh, and we were saved, and there's just like a spring in our step now, and a bit of optimism around the place. But we've still got minus eight points. Uh, we, that was, uh, we got two four points deducted. The EFL told our previous owner he had to set a fund up of three million to cover wages. He refused to do it, so this is with four points, but said they'll be carried over to next season. Two days before the deal went through, the it is again, so we're appealing that one, actually, because at that time, um, contracts were, were with solicitors, so I think the new owners sort of claiming, you know, he, he couldn't do anything about that. It's a bit unfair, which I agree. So we could possibly be starting on minus four, even though we're on minus eight at the moment, if we win that appeal. So fingers crossed for that. It is such a crazy story and, and, and goes back, you know, a, a couple of years. I mean, hopefully you're at the end of it now and there is some stability for the football club. How do you go into sort of this season? What are the aspirations? What are the hopes? I know, as you've said, you think an awful lot of the manager. Yeah. Um, well, Maloney himself said uh, anything but relegation will be a, a massive achievement. I think he's saying that a little bit tongue-in-cheek because we've got some quality in, in, in the side. I don't see us pushing at the top end. I mean, minus four. I mean, the last four times we've been in this league, we've we've won it three times, and the and the fourth time was in administration, you know, and we set uh, points records and things, you know. So we have a bit of history with League One, uh, but it, it, I, I don't want to get carried away because what, we've lost quite a few um, of our, our, our more experienced players. Well, 13 players have left the club. Um, including captain and vice captain from last year, Max Power, Tom Tom Naylor, two great midfielders who were fantastic in League One have, have gone. Will Keane, twenty nine goals in League One, he's left as well. You know, so we've we've lost a lot of experience, 
And the, the guys coming in, we've got a few on, on loan and we've signed some free transfers. They're all young lads. And they look, I watched it against Everton and we were, <laughs> they blew my mind the football we were playing. Uh, but it was a friendly and it was, it was, I, I, I tweeted at half time, nil nil, I'm blown away. Uh, half time in the first, you know, pre season friendly of, of the summer. Um, but I was, I was blown away. But then you think to yourself, League One's a tough, tough division. Uh, you know, uh, when <clears throat> our two centre backs are 19, 19 years of age. So when they come up against like, uh, you know, the, the, the season pro front, elbows flying everywhere. Are they going to react to that? You know, you've got to think of all these things throughout throughout the season. Uh, if we're in the top 10 at the turn of the year, uh, I think we might push for, for, for the playoffs. And I'd be, I'd be delighted with that. I'd be delighted with, with a, a finishing 14th, if I'm being honest. I'm just delighted to get back playing football. Wigan fan Barry Worthington there. Great to hear that the future of his club is secure. Again, I wonder what they can achieve this season. I wonder what Derby can achieve. That's the bigger question. There's certainly a bit more pressure and a bit more expected of the Rams compared to this time last season, now going into their second year at this level, of course. I'm sure there will be plenty of twists and turns along the way. George Ellick from the Not The Top 20 podcast has been giving us his assessment of League One going into this new campaign. It's impossible to say for sure until we see these teams kick a ball uh, competitively, but on the face of things and on paper, it looks like a really weak League One in comparison to recent seasons. You know, we've seen uh, Ipswich and Sheffield Wednesday go up last season and Sunderland the year before that, including Rotherham, who seemed to League One. So uh, those teams have, have gone out of the league upwards. Then you consider the, the teams that are coming down, um, Reading being one of them, who are currently under a transfer embargo and have some serious off-field issues. Wigan, who start the season on a minus eight points deduction. And then even teams last season who perform very well. You know, two teams that finish in the playoffs in Peterborough, who, you know, Johnson Clark Harris is currently transfer listed, had the captaincy taken off him and, and is up for up for sale, as I say. Frankie Kent, their key centre back, has left. Uh, Barnsley, Mike Duff has moved on. Uh, Mads Anderson's moved their centre back to the, the Premier League with Luton. So you've seen, you know, big good teams go up and the teams coming down don't look ultra competitive. And then a couple of the, the major players from last season look to be a bit weaker. So yeah, a good season there maybe to be uh, bookmakers' favourites, which is what Derby are at this stage. Yeah, and we'll come to that in a second. But but on the sort of the theme of, of the competitive level of the division, is is that partly why you guys certainly think the four teams that have been promoted will all be be okay this year and, and you know looking mid table, high mid table, maybe in, in best case scenarios? Yeah, generally teams who come up from League Two, unless they are, you know, they have all their talent taken off them so you look at Forest Green for example who won League 2 and Rob Edwards went to Watford and then Luton um, key players such as Kane Wilson who I'm sure we'll talk about in, in a bit but also Nicky Cadden um, Ebu Adams you know all these players moved on in that summer and, and they, they weren't really the team they were the season before I think we've seen real continuity with, with all four teams that have come up from League 2 um, in terms of the managers in terms of the players that they've managed to retain as well so with, with there being a couple of teams who um you know, maybe a couple of years later in the cycle, Cambridge is certainly one, Exeter another, Cheltenham another, where you look at the team that came up a couple of years ago in terms of the playing um, playing stuff, all the kind of major players, the protagonists have, have moved on and up since then. And that's generally where you kind of revert back to the mean. So at this stage, I think Stephen and Northampton, Leighton Orient and Carlisle all have enough continuity going to this campaign that should see them safe. Um, but... You know, maybe if a manager leaves in a couple of months' time, or whatever, then, then things can change quickly. Yeah, and we're obviously really hoping that Carlisle do well with the, with the Paul Simpson connection there. Uh, let's talk about the top end of the table. Mm. That's where you think Derby will be? I think you've got them second in, in, in your predictions. A lot of bookmakers think they're among the favourites as well. Why do you, and, and why do you think a lot of other people are tipping Derby to be there or thereabouts? I think when, when you look at the team, um, you know, especially when you consider this is perceived to be a weak renewal, you know, it, it is incredibly strong. Um, the fact that, I mean, I know Jason Knight has obviously moved on, but the fact that uh, Aaron Cashin and Max Bird are still League One players, I, I can't really believe. You know, I think in terms of Cashin last season, he really showed what an unbelievable centre-back he can be. I think he's got every attribute in terms of the way that he plays the game and it helps being a left footer as well. That. Um, you know, we saw under Rossini that he's very comfortable with the ball at his feet. He was asked to do a bit of a different role for, for Paul Wall and, and thrived as that more aggressive defender. 
Um, and then you look at the the more experienced players in the team as well. Now, I know that um, talking about Didzi might be difficult for, for Derby fans who didn't want to lose him, let alone to a, a League Two club. Um, but you, you look through the team and you've still got so much experience, so much quality in there as well. And Conor Harron, uh, certainly uh, James Collins up front too. And then in terms of the additions, you know, Curtis Nelson and Sonny Bradley are, are, are two players that you know, have been there and done it at this level and, and higher. So it's a very solid side. Um, I think the recruitment itself is... Um, you know, impressive and the kind of business you'd expect Derby to do. I, I do wonder with Paul Warren obviously demanding a lot from his players out of possession. Um, it's interesting to note that Derby will have one of the older squads in the in the league because um, you know we know that that Warren likes his team to be the fittest in the league, likes his team to press aggressively off the ball. Um, but there, there's one there's one signing Cam Wilson that I think is possibly my my favourite signing in the in, in League One this season. George Ellick there, who, like a lot of people, expects Derby to be right up there come the end of the season. The Rams finish at home to Carlisle on the final day. April feels a long way off now, of course. Let's settle by looking at Derby's first five fixtures of this new campaign. Plenty of home games in there too, actually. Derby hosts Blackpool in the EFL Cup on Tuesday, Oxford in the league a week later, and then Fleetwood a fortnight today. And Derby don't have to travel too far for their first away fixture either. That's at Burton Albion on the second Saturday of the season. The season starts here against Wigan in just a couple of hours' time. It'll be the first chance to experience a full, packed Pride Park Stadium for Derby's summer signings, plenty of whom have won promotion from League One before, of course. Former Peterborough wingback Joe Ward is one of them. He's been telling me he can't wait for today. Yeah, um, excited, really excited. Uh, it's been a it's been a tough pre-season, um, but yeah, we're in the final bit of it now. Um, so just all preparations this week. Let me ask about that first and foremost. Tough is a word that's been used to describe it quite a lot. Has it been different to what you've been used to? The amount of you know physical work you've had to do. Yeah, it's been a it's been a high demand, um, but it's yeah it's, it's been a new challenge um, and something um, that I think everyone's strived um, and 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 to get on to get on well um, and come out of it well. We're all, we're all feeling fit. All look fit. Um, so hopefully we can put it into the season. I'm always amazed how quickly the groups gel and, and how quickly it feels like you've been here for years when it's only been, what, six, eight weeks or so. How has it felt from your side? Yeah, exactly that. It feels like I've been here for, for like a year. It, um, everyone's made me feel really welcome. Um, it, all the lads are, are so welcoming. Um, you know, forming them bonds and, and gelling already. Um, yeah, it's just a re really good feel uh, around the club, around the changing room, around everyone. Um, so hopefully, yeah, we can we can take it into the season and, and start off well. Pre-season's been good. I know you should never read into results and uh, and that sort of thing. But have you been satisfied with with the work that's gone on during the games? Definitely, yeah, yeah. We've you know we've tried to um, play the way we're gonna we're gonna play when we start the season and, and uh, implement plans and, and and tactics and stuff like that. So um, yeah, we've we've had some good results and um, uh, and obviously some not so good ones, which which you get in pre-season. But it's it's all about um, you know getting the way the way we want to work and the way we want to play out and and um, getting that fitness. Um, and, and then relationships and stuff. I think you, you've shown people what you're about a little bit already, crosses into the box, taking players on. Again, have you just felt settled and comfortable straight away? Yeah, just, just feel just, just full of confidence um, and, and that's what the place does to, has done to me. Um, feeling really settled and, and, uh, and I can just concentrate on coming out here and, and, uh, and playing with confidence and, and hopefully starting the season with confidence. And you've moved to the area as well, I know you've not been here too long, but are you starting to get just how important the football club is to the city? Yeah, it's massive everywhere I go. Um, it's just, you just see a derby, like derby all the time and, and see little kids with football shirts on and uh, you just see it all, everywhere. So it's, yeah, it's massive. It's obviously great support here. You know, every, everyone supports derby here. There's so many, so many fans. Um, and uh, it's going to be massive for us this season, um, and I can't wait to can't wait to play in front of them. Getting recognised yet? Or <laughs> yeah, a little bit, yeah. But I, I, I like it. I take the time out um, any day to to get a picture or, or sign an autograph or anything. It's just giving back, isn't it? So yeah, it's going to be it's going to be good to start the season. Um, 
hopefully uh, Pride Park's are bouncing. And look, ahead of opening day and, and the optimism that comes with it, we have to ask, what conversations have you had internally about what you think you, you can and, and maybe should achieve this season? As a group, um, yeah, we, we all we all want promotion. Um, we all want to be champions, so um, we're not going to settle for nothing less, so we're going to give it everything. Um, and yeah, we're going we're gonna, to, we've been pushed in pre-season as hard as we can, so hopefully it's going to, um, you know, hopefully we're going to see the, see the stuff in the, in the season. That's Derby defender Joe Ward. Here are the fixtures for the opening day of the new League One season. Barnsley have lost their manager since the playoff final defeat back in May. They kick off at home to Port Vale. Bolton are another team expected to fight for the title. They welcome Lincoln City. While Charlton, who have strengthened this summer, host one of the promoted sides in Leighton Orient. Could be a long season for Reading, who start off at home to Peterborough. And Wickham always seem to be in the mix for the playoffs, at least. They welcome Exeter today. And here on the opening day at Pride Park Stadium, Derby County host Wigan Athletic. Overseas viewers can watch the action on Match Day Live from Rams TV. Go to dcfc.co.uk to get your match pass now. Michael Weedock and former Derby skipper Sean Barker will be with you from 2.30 and they'll bring you reaction right here after the game as well. See you soon. Bye-bye.